Hi everyone. Hey, welcome to module three. I hope things are going well for you so far. Of course, absolutely reach out if they're not or if you're getting stuck. So, module three, we're building on the work you did last week, developing a roadmap for your project, for what you're producing in this course. And this week, it's all about reusable learning objects. Reusable learning objects are just the mainstay, that like key element for how we teach in a digital environment. They're especially designed for people teaching online. And what they do is they make it essentially really easy to uh, teach content over and over. Now, that's not what any of us are doing. And today is uh, July 5th and it's 1230 and I'm building this video. So it's not like I use official reusable content. I build content and I wind up revising it all the time. Um, but I'm taking another course at another school right now where it is all reusable content. It's just produced and developed over and over. You're going to be doing different things um, for your own projects, but what I want you to get this week is the concept of what a reusable learning object is, how it works, and why it might work really well for you in some, in some way with some modification. So it's three things. It is a standard that you're teaching, the essentially why you're teaching what you're teaching. It's the teaching that you produce somehow in some digital format, and I'll show you some different possibilities. And then it's some kind of an assessment, something you ask students to do tied to that teaching so you know if they got it or not. When you build that out a little more, you might also develop ways that uh, students can relearn the content if maybe just watching your video or watching your piece of teaching again doesn't quite work. So it's this package. A video itself is not a reusable learning object, but it's that package, that combination. Let me show you a few things that I've done, and it'll give you a little bit of a picture of what an RLO actually is and why it works so well. You know, before I do, just um, one of the things that struck me in this time recently, in this weird time of pandemic teaching, were colleagues from different places who had to teach online. They're teaching remotely. And, you know, their style was plug in the webcam, start Zoom, and take their lecture what they would do in person with students and just sit and talk to the camera or talk to the screen without even making eye contact. Unfortunately, that lost a lot of students and a lot of people just turned off their cameras and tuned out because watching someone speak is not very engaging and it's a really hard way to learn content. That's why I've kind of emphasized different things like uh, cult of pedagogy's idea that to learn something, students have to do something to playlists and other things. So an RLO is, is kind of a chance for you to mix it up, to take what you're teaching, create it in a, a digital format um, that's engaging, that, that is content rich and content driven, and it gives you a way to know if anyone out there is getting it. It all comes together like that. Let me show you a few things. You'll notice that I'm using Screencast-O-Matic and uh, while I have occasional glitches, uh, one thing I like is that it can keep me here um, in this little webcam window that I can actually reposition depending on what I'm doing at the time. Um, it is uh, connection with students increases uh, when they can see the instructor speaking. It doesn't matter if we're not live right now. What matters is that you can see me here on your screen. I like that I can flip between taking over the screen entirely to 
wanting to show you things and just kind of moving myself in a corner. So let me show you um, how I use RLOs in my own um, my own teaching, you know, whether it's in person or online. This is uh, my YouTube account, and uh, let me just go to my videos. And you'll see that, you know, I, I put up um, all kinds of my instruction for this course. But uh, there's one or two that I wanted to show. Oof, let's see if I can do this a little better. Sorry for this. I'm going to be uh, OK, here we go. So here's a video, and I'll actually uh, I'll actually make this big. This is an RLO. Um, you're not seeing all the components. You're just seeing a video, and what it is is it's a project that my students do at Mid Main Technical Center, where they develop they find all these photos. And they learn how to use Photoshop to make them into a grid. And so I'll just play this for a second. So hopefully now you have uh, come up with 25 images and you've placed them in your grid. And everything should fit just right. It never fits just right. But anyway, they figure it out. So um, this video winds up being about 11 minutes, which is probably twice as long as an RLO should be, but granted I'm teaching some pretty complex stuff here. And it is tied to a standard. The standard they have for this is, uh, there's two. One is uh, working with images um, in Photoshop and other media. And the other is working with different color patterns and understanding what colors mean and how tone works. So that's the standard and they have that. It's in our Brightspace portal. This is the video that I connect to that standard and then once they're done watching they have their own project that they're going to create. So I will know very early in the process if they're getting the content and uh, they have multiple opportunities to relearn the content. So if they get this far into the video and they're just not seeing how I'm doing whatever here, they can go back and replay. Now often, and what a lot of folks would say, is that an RLO, that effective online teaching, needs to be short. You know, three to six minutes is kind of ideal. Um, this one is a little more complex. It's a little long at 11 minutes, but it is the second video in a series, so I broke up the content. So that package together makes an RLO, and I use Screencast-O-Matic for a great deal of mine. Um, I've put a link to um, resources for digital teaching, and I really just went through some, some previous courses, what some folks had found, um, some things I use, and some things that I just came across online that are helpful. This is a tiny list. There are so many more things. The trick is that you develop something where you are teaching the content. It shouldn't just be read this article, um, do this Quizlet, and there's your standard. But it should be something where you are actively instructing students or finding a way to help them learn something. You can certainly work in multiple things. In my case, I'm working in Photoshop. Um, you could be teaching uh, something. Maybe it is uh, c communication or um, writing uh, for, for marketing or something like that. And maybe you're, you're also showing them Canva. Um, there's all kinds of possibilities. Here's an example uh, from a previous year. Uh, this was 2019. The RLO, this was a course a student cre uh, was creating um, on ancient Greek and um, classical literature. They had a learning objective just to identify the gods and understand the context. They developed, um, I believe they used Movely. 
This week's goal is for you to be able to identify Greek gods and understand the historical context. They state the goal, mythology. which is very helpful. This brief video will overview. And they use this uh, this kind of fun thing called Movely to create really the instruction piece of this. So, pretty short, four minutes. They then direct them to art, philosophy, democracy. A National Geographic clip, about four minutes. And they also direct them to a photo gallery. And then they have them complete kind of a content check, uh, which I think in their case was a survey. They used Google Docs. Just kind of a, a did you know this, like a did you learn this sort of approach. All right, so that's an RLO. In previous courses, uh, previous versions of this course, um, this week the assignment was to produce two RLOs. And for some people that was just like an automatic um, no-brainer. For other people, I, I just found it was a lot to ask. I know nearly all of you are going to be creating a number of RLOs. So rather than require two this week, the, the assignment for the week is to produce one full RLO. Certainly go longer if you would like to do that. I encourage you not to just uh, turn on your webcam and give a lecture for 10 or 15 minutes, but to have something visual. If uh, your teaching means you know you need to guide students through something, and it could be anything from um, revision to writing a great intro to uh, basic math basic math um, assignment, do something, whether it's create a PowerPoint, uh, use one of these techniques like Movely or Screencast-O-Matic. But do something so you have a good visual for students as well. You see that uh, when I'm using PowerPoint, I can't use Screencast-O-Matic and keep myself on screen and record a PowerPoint for some reason or, or Keynote. So what I've been doing is I've been using Keynote um, and uh, playing, not fully playing the slideshow. You're seeing like my working Keynote here. That lets me keep myself on as well. These videos that I produce uh, for you each week often take me two tries. Sometimes I've done as many as like four or five at least false starts before I feel like, uh, even with my notes, before I feel like I, I'm saying my content right. Um, I know it's different if this was an in-class thing. I, I would not restart my lecture four or five times. But when I am recording, um, you know, I don't want you to hear all the false starts as I navigate my way. And this is obviously not as natural on my end nor yours, so we do the best we can. But take your time with it. Explore, figure out what it is you want students to learn. That's the standard. Figure out how you can best teach that. That's your teaching. And then figure out how you're going to know uh, they got it or not. Um, in my case, I'll know when you post your RLOs. Hopefully, I'll know uh, beforehand when you know you post your idea for what you're going to create as an RLO, and then I can hopefully interject. Um, uh, please, again, uh, if you have any questions um, or you need help or you need a strategy, definitely. Uh, Jump, send me a text, send me a message, and I'll be, uh, I'll be right there. Just to really quickly run through uh, the rest of the week, um, let me just uh, back up one here. Um, so we're working on RLOs. I may have another link, or, uh, another link or two. I gave a short video here just about attention span. I've already violated that going 14 minutes, but uh, that's okay. Uh, just a couple links to take a look at. Um, since a number of you are working in Google Sites, um, in Google Classroom, from the Cult of Pedagogy, this one's an interesting one, 16 Ideas for Student Projects. And because many of you are working in blended learning, I think this link is helpful. Again, when I say explore, uh, it does not mean you have to read um, word for word, but just take a look and see what there is in there that you find helpful for yourself. 
Um, so, uh, oh, I, I also want to kind of help make this collaborative. So if you do have any links, and I sure hope you do, uh, links that are worth um, spreading around, just put a quick nothing fancy post and links to share, and we'll kind of uh, spread that around. That's how some of the ones in the past have come up. Uh, this great one called Now Comment uh, came up from a former student um, in this program who just shared it out. So that's why that's why this approach works so well. And um, a big work of the week that's going to take you the most time is build your RLO. And if you're you know j jumping in and you got one nailed, I I'd go for another one because you're going to be doing this. Um, again next week and you're building out a lot of stuff so the more time you can get in the better and then finally um, spend some time uh, just if you're working on a Google Classroom spend some time on that if you're working on a website build that out a bit and see where you go with it alright I'll put up the, uh, the the reading links I think the reading links are helpful um, you know it's not the kind of reading where we're talking about specific chapters but I've tried to align these chapters to what we're doing each week all right hope that's a help I uh, hope you had a great fourth and um, we will be talking to you thanks bye